Bats play an important role in Alberta's ecosystems, consuming thousands of insects each night and providing natural pest control that supports crops, forests, and gardens. It's not surprising then that many people want to help bats and attract them to their property. While habitat preservation and restoration are the best ways to support bats, bat boxes have often been used to attract bats or to compensate for the loss of roosting space. This video will explore key considerations for designing an effective bat box and some limitations of bat boxes. We'll also share best practices for placement, maintenance, and long-term care of a bat box to make a meaningful impact on bat conservation. Bats are facing steep declines due to habitat loss and the devastating spread of white nose syndrome a disease that has wiped out millions of bats across North America. As natural roosts disappear due to urban development and deforestation, bats are left with fewer places to shelter and raise their young. These losses have ripple effects on ecosystems and human industries. In areas where bat populations have severely declined, pesticide use has increased disrupting natural pest control balances and posing risks to human health and the environment. In urban and agricultural areas, bat boxes can provide safe alternative roosts, helping to reduce the harm caused when bats are evicted from buildings, such as attics or sheds. Without suitable roosting alternatives, displaced bats may simply relocate to a neighboring structure, leading to repeated evictions and removals from buildings. Bat boxes provide alternative roosting habitat for species that frequently use buildings. In the absence of buildings, most of these bats would have naturally roosted in tree cavities or rock crevices. They are often designed to support maternity colonies where mother bats raise their pups. Male bats will also use bat boxes, although they typically roost alone or in small groups. These structures come in various designs, including multi-chambered bat houses, rocket boxes, and bat condos that can house thousands of bats. Unlike birdhouses, bat boxes are uniquely designed to meet bats' needs. Bats enter through the bottom via a landing strip, a vertical surface at least 10 centimeters high, that allows them to grip and climb into the box. To support their natural climbing behavior, the landing strip should have a textured surface, such as shallow grooves that mimic the roughness of tree bark. Unlike birds, bats don't build nests. Instead, they cling to surfaces and huddle together for warmth. In Alberta, bat houses are primarily used by little brown myotis and big brown bats, two species that often roost in buildings. While these species may have naturally used trees or rock crevices, most tree roosting bats do not use bat houses. In Alberta, eight of the province's nine bat species rely on trees for roosting, but only two regularly use bat houses. For this reason, bat boxes should not be installed in undisturbed natural areas. Introducing artificial roosts in these spaces can unintentionally displace rare or sensitive bat species that rely exclusively on natural roosting sites. Additionally, bat boxes only address roosting needs. Bats also depend on healthy ecosystems with access to water and suitable habitats for foraging and commuting. Without access to diverse and well-connected habitats, bat boxes alone cannot fully support bat populations. Understanding these limitations ensures that bat box projects are both safe for bats and effective in supporting conservation efforts. A well-designed bat box creates the right conditions for bats to thrive. The microclimate inside, temperature and humidity, is critical for their success. Bats prefer hot roosts, especially for raising pups. However, prolonged temperatures above 39 degrees Celsius inside the box can become dangerous if they cannot escape the heat. The key is to provide a mix of roosting options. 
multi-chambered designs are ideal for providing a range of temperatures, allowing bats to adjust to changing weather throughout the day. Placing multiple bat boxes in both sunny and shaded areas gives bats the choice of different conditions, helping them stay safe even during extreme weather. These designs are particularly beneficial for maternity colonies as they provide stable, protected conditions for raising pups. A recommended starting point is the four-chamber nursery house, which can be customized by adding height, width, or additional chambers. Ensure the chamber spacing doesn't exceed one inch to help retain heat and prevent access by predators and wasps. Rocket boxes allow bats to move around a central post to find their preferred temperature. However, they are more complex to build, and early evidence suggests they may have lower occupancy rates in Alberta than four-chambered nursery houses. For larger scale projects, bat condos have been used in an effort to more closely mimic the temperature variations and spacious environments of buildings. However, these structures are costly to build, and more research is needed to identify designs that are effective and suitable for local bat species. We do not recommend single-chambered bat boxes for maternity colonies as they are prone to extreme temperature fluctuations, especially in full sun. While bats may still occasionally use them, their tendency to heat up and cool down rapidly makes them unsuitable for raising pups, as this can slow pup development. If you already have one, consider placing it in a shaded location or using it as an additional bat box to offer a range of temperature options. The materials you use can impact the success and safety of your bat box. Cedar, pine, or exterior plywood are ideal, offering good insulation and gripping surfaces. Avoid materials like pressure-treated wood or mesh linings as they can harm bats or create hazards. Mesh or screen material inside the bat box can separate and entangle bats, posing serious safety risks. Instead, ensure the interior surfaces are roughened or made from natural textured wood to provide a secure grip. For added durability, apply a non-toxic, low-odor paint or stain only to the exterior of the bat box, as strong odors from chemicals or stains can repel bats. In cooler climates, using darker colors like black or brown can help the box absorb heat. However, even in far northern latitudes, Bat boxes can overheat on warm days, making it beneficial to provide a mix of light and dark boxes to offer a range of temperature conditions. To further protect the bat box from weather damage, consider using durable roofing materials like tin or copper, which can extend its lifespan. When assembling the bat box, use screws and wood glue instead of nails to prevent the structure from loosening or separating over time. The placement of your bat box is critical to its success. For the best results, mount it three to six meters above the ground in a location that allows bats to exit into open flight space. This height helps keep bats safe from predators like domestic cats, which can ambush them as they drop from the box. Placing multiple bat boxes with different sun exposures provides bats with a range of temperature options. Boxes facing southerly directions will reach warmer temperatures while those facing north will stay cooler. In hotter climates, overheating can be dangerous, potentially causing bats to crowd near the entrance or abandon the box altogether. This heat stress can lead to injury or even death. To reduce this risk, place additional boxes in shaded areas to give bats a cooler alternative. Use lighter color paints to reflect sunlight and reduce heat absorption in warmer environments and ensure proper ventilation and design to maintain stable internal temperatures. Offering roosting options in different locations helps bats regulate their body temperature and adapt to changing conditions. The ideal number of bat boxes isn't certain, but three or more is a good target. Bats will move to find better roosting conditions, which might change from day to day based on weather and their changing energy needs. Having multiple boxes allows bats to choose from different temperature options based on sun exposure and design. Placing your bat box near water sources or natural habitats significantly improves its chances of attracting bats by providing easy access to food and hydration. 
to further ensure the safety and success of your bat box. Mount the box in areas free from owl perches and away from artificial lighting to minimize predation and disturbance. Avoid planting thorny bushes directly below the box and remove harmful weeds to prevent injury to fledgling bats as they begin to fly. By carefully selecting the right placement and making thoughtful adjustments for your local climate, you can greatly improve the effectiveness of your bat box. To check for occupancy, look for guano, small dark pellets similar to mouse droppings. Bat guano often accumulates in piles or sticks to surfaces that mice wouldn't typically reach, such as the walls of a building or directly beneath the bat house. Watching the box at dusk is another effective method, as bats typically emerge at sunset to begin their nightly hunt for insects. Bats are long-lived animals, with some species living up to 40 years or more. Their colonies can occupy the same roost for decades, so long-term maintenance is important. One key consideration is guano, or bat droppings, which will naturally accumulate beneath the bat box. To manage this, position the box over vegetation where the guano can decompose effectively. Avoid placing boxes in high traffic areas or locations where falling pups might be at risk. Inspect your bat box regularly for wear and tear. Check for cracks or damage that could affect insulation and ensure the landing strip remains rough enough for bats to grip. Though maintenance is generally minimal, it should be performed every few years, preferably during winter or when the box is unoccupied, to tighten screws, seal any gaps, and replace worn parts as needed to maintain the box's durability and safety. While bat boxes offer shelter to two of Alberta's bat species, they aren't a solution for all bats. Alberta is home to seven other species that do not use bat boxes and could face increased competition for resources. Bat boxes serve as supplemental roosts in areas where natural habitats have been lost due to urban development or permanent loss of tree cover. They also provide a safe alternative for bats being excluded from buildings. But they are not a replacement for preserving and restoring natural habitats. Bat boxes alone cannot address all conservation challenges. Supporting bats requires a broader commitment to preserving and restoring natural habitats that sustain their foraging and commuting needs. Proper design and installation are also key. Poorly placed or unsuitable bat boxes can create ecological traps, luring bats into unsafe conditions. Following best practices helps reduce these risks and ensures that bat boxes truly benefit their intended occupants. Finally, remember that bats are not a threat to humans if left undisturbed. No touch means no risk. While bats can carry rabies, the risk of transmission is extremely low if you avoid handling them. If you have direct contact with a bat, such as being bitten, scratched, or waking up to find one in the room, consult a healthcare provider immediately to determine if you need rabies post-exposure treatment. Rabies treatment is most effective when given as soon as possible after exposure. Rabies is rare but serious, and preventive treatment is highly effective. The Alberta Community Bat Program provides resources to help you contribute to bat conservation. You can participate in citizen science projects or submit guano samples for genetic analysis to identify bat species in your area. Beyond installing bat boxes, you can support bat conservation by advocating for policies that protect natural habitats and by participating in local conservation and habitat restoration efforts. Bats play a vital role as natural pest controllers, protecting crops, forests, and gardens. With your support, these fascinating mammals can continue to benefit our shared environment for generations to come.
These recommendations are based, in part, on the best management practices for the use of bat houses in the U.S. and Canada, developed by WCS Canada and several partner agencies. Scan the QR code to access the full document. We are grateful for the generosity of donors who continue to support WCS Canada's Alberta Community Bat Program. Visit albertabats.ca to learn more about Alberta's bats, report your bat sightings, or access free bat house design blueprints.